Hello everyone. Let us look at the next chapter which is chemistry in everyday life. Like food, shelter and water, medicine is also a very important part of our life. Chemistry plays a very important role in our day to day life. Now to understand this importance, let us first understand a terminology which is called as drug. Drug is defined as a substance which is used for curing, prevention or diagnosis of a particular disease. Now these drugs or these chemicals in medicine can be subdivided or can be divided into many parts. And these different forms of medicines are analgesics, antimicrobials, antacids and histamines. Now let us look at them one by one. The first one analgesics. Analgesics are the drugs which relieve us from pain. Now these drugs act on our nervous system and provide us relief without letting us to go to unconsciousness. These analgesics can be further divided into narcotic kind of analgesics and non-narcotic kind of analgesics. Narcotic type of analgesics are those which relieve us from pain by depressing our nervous system. The example of these kind of um, narcotic are heroin, morphine etc. Now this is the structure of example which is heroin. Its structure is C12H23NO5. Now the second part of it is non-narcotic. But before we move on to non-narcotics, we will look at the disadvantage of narcotics. One very important setback of narcotic analgesics is that they, many a times the patients are addicted to it. There are some side effects of it like vomiting, then uh, loss of consciousness, etc. So let us look at non-narcotics. Non-narcotic drugs are those which are anti-inflammatory drugs. Now there can be inflammation in our tissues and that inflammation or that swelling is actually prevented by non-narcotic drugs. They are also antipyretic which means they relieve us from fever, they reduce the fever in a human body. Now one example, very famous example of it is aspirin and the chemical structure of aspirin is as shown here. We have seen what are analgesics. Let us move on to the next category of drugs which are antimicrobials. Now all of us are familiar with what are antimicrobials. There are many kind of uh, microorganisms like viruses, fungi, bacteria, etc. which cause a lot of diseases in the human bodies. And to prevent the growth of these microorganisms or to kill these bacteria and microorganisms, there are antimicrobials. Now these antimicrobials can be further divided into parts and the further classification is done as antibiotics, antiseptics and disinfectants. Let us look at them one by one. Let us look at the next subdivision of antimicrobials which is antibiotics. Now antibiotics are derived from living matter or microorganisms to kill or prevent other microorganisms. One example of it is salvarsin. Its chemical composition is C12H12 Al2O2 N2. Antibiotics can be further subdivided as narrow spectrum and broad spectrum antibiotics. The example of narrow spectrum antibiotics is penicillin. Penicillin is effective only on gram positive or gram negative kind of bacteria. Whereas example of this broad spectrum is chloroamphenicol which is effective on both gram positive and gram negative kind of bacteria. 
Let us move on to the next subdivision which is antiseptics. Now antiseptics are applied on living tissues so that the growth of bacteria in the wound is less or is prevented so that the wound does not get infected. One common example of antiseptic we all know is Dettol which has a chemical composition. Now next subdivision is disinfectants. We have seen that antiseptics are applied on living tissues. On the other hand disinfectants are applied on non-living things like we have floors then public sanitizing, uh, sanitization places etc where these disinfectants are used for killing the microorganisms or for preventing the growth of microorganisms on non-living things. Examples of those are chlorine, sulfur dioxide and phenol which is used by almost everybody in everyday life. Let us look at the next category of drugs which are antacids. Now we are all familiar with what are antacids. The medicines which deal with acidity in the stomach are called as antacids. They are base which neutralize excess of acid in the stomach. During digestion of food our stomach walls secrete acid which is HCl hydrochloric acid. Now due to excessive secretion of HCl there is hyperacidity and this hyperacidity condition is controlled by antacids. They neutralize all the acid in the stomach and give relief to the patient who has an acidity problem. Now the examples, common examples of antacids are sodium bicarbonate, metal dioxides of aluminium and magnesium. Let us look at the next category which is antihistamines. Now this is also related to stomach ailments. The component which is responsible for producing HCl or we can say acid and pepsin is histamine. The structure of histamine is as given here. It has the chemical composition of C5, H9 and N3. Now histamine interacts with the stomach walls and it produces HCl and pepsin. If the histamine does not react with the stomach wall what will happen? HCl production will be automatically reduced and that is exactly what antihistamines do. These drugs prevent histamine and the stomach walls to interact with each other and hence reducing the acid production in the stomach. So we have seen two parts which is antacids and antihistamines. Antacids, in antacids there is already production of acid in the stomach and that is neutralized by using antacids. Whereas antihistamines will prevent the secretion of HCl itself. So this is curing and this is prevention. 